write a gangster rap book without uh, Pac and Biggie in it. Um, were you able to do uh, uh, some stuff uh, uh, pertaining to them? Yeah, absolutely. In the book, The History of Gangster Rap, I have a chapter called The So-Called East Coast, West Coast War, and that focuses on Tupac and Biggie because what I wanted to do with the book was really focus on the music. I tried to stay away from a lot of the beefs unless the beefs had a change or did something different to the music. So, you know, obviously I addressed Cube leaving NWA because that changed the music. And then I addressed Biggie and Pac because I talk about it in the book, the history of gangster rap. But, you know, once Biggie and Tupac died, the labels stopped signing West Coast gangster rap artists for a few years. And that also led... That also led to the rise of Master P, not coincidentally, because he wasn't from, you know, South Los Angeles, and his brand of gangster rap was, you know, more danceable and it made you feel good, even though he was talking about the same type of murder and robbing and killing, drug dealing, and, you know, No Limit clearly presented themselves as a gang and an army. So, um, but with Biggie and Tupac, I wanted to really show how, you know, their deaths changed things. Like I have a great part in there where I talked to Dave Liner, who signed Master P to No Limit, and, uh, uh, excuse me, signed Master P to Priority Records, signed No Limit to Priority Records. But I had him talk about how, you know, with all the violence going on, that Priority Records changed how they did their security. So... Here you have Priority Records, which put out Easy e put out N.W.A. It distributed a lot of, you know, gangster rap companies. It put out Ice Cube's solo material, put out Mac-10 solo material, put out West Side Connection. So you're dealing right. with a lot of the gangster stuff. It put out a few Rap-A-Lot releases. So, you know, Priority Records changed how it did its business because of what happened with Tupac and Biggie. So this was not only important to how the music was made, but it was important to the business of the music. So that is important. And then unfortunately, you know, obviously those two guys died and, you know, that legacy is, you know, terrible by itself. But then it also changed the music because the label shut down. So you had, you know, the only real artists that were getting signed or getting promoted were artists that were out. You had the Mac 10s, but he had been out already. You had Exhibit, who then became uh, popular a couple years later, you know, thanks to Be Pleased with Snoop. And then you had the East Siders, and you had Dre and Snoop coming back. But there wasn't this infusion of new talent and new artists like there had been, the pre- you know, from basically Ice-T on up to their deaths, which... You know, it was about a decade. So it's just very striking how big events that happen have a trickle-down effect on the music and how the business is done. So that's definitely yeah. addressed, and I have a whole chapter about it and how the the business changed and how the media was involved in fanning the flames. And, you know, it's just a lot of different things that I address in that chapter. <laughs> 